My guests are Henry Chu of the LA Times, Rachel Shabby, who writes on Middle East affairs, Yasmin Alibai Brown of The Independent, and Chin Ran Chue, who is a Chinese writer. The horror of some 70 people suffocating in the back of a locked truck, their decomposing bodies found in Austria, brings home the desperation of hundreds of thousands seeking a better life in Europe. That human tragedy comes as the British government is forced to concede its plans to reduce net inward migration to fewer than 100,000 a year have failed with the highest number of immigrants ever recorded. Can governments ever get a grip on immigration or is it an uncontrollable natural human impulse to pursue a better life? or save your life in the case of some people. I mean, admittedly, that's conflating refugees, migrants, and, and, other, uh, and other terms. But it does seem that Europe, for all its riches, all its wealth, doesn't have a clue as to how to handle this. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's really raising really serious questions about who we are, who we want to be, that this is our reaction, that all governments and officials can do is you know, go on about border controls and net migration. And, you know, these we're facing a massive humanitarian crisis, the biggest since the Second World War. Um, people don't risk life. They don't risk death unless they're desperate for life. And the only possible reaction to this should be, you know, hello, welcome, how can we help? That shouldn't even be a debate. It's baseline. So that's one thing. But the other thing is that I think that governments, and especially in Europe, where there are demographic and economic issues, are being very myopic about um, migration as something that, you know, civilizations, countries, societies only grow with exposure to others, with exposure to other cultures and other different, different, different people. That's it. You know, that's how you get innovation. That's how you get growth spurts. That's how you get development. And to not recognize that, to not recognize the benefit of an, an influx of different kinds of people into your country just seems horribly short-sighted and narrow. There's been a lot of talk uh, here and elsewhere about pull factors, why people want to come. But actually, the push factors are the ones that seem to be in the case, the horrible case in, in Austria and uh, those coming from Syria, that's what's moving people. They're being pushed. Absolutely. I mean, I think in terms of migration and immigration, just look around this table. I mean, how many of us are here in this country because of immigration or, in my case, growing up in the U.S.? Um, and this impulse to have a better life, of course, has been there since time immemorial. But now what you're seeing are people who are risking their lives in incredibly uh, dangerous situations in order to do so. And you only do that when you're being pushed. And, right. you know, it's not simply because you want to have a better salary. It's because you want to live. But yeah. for for, for all you, you've said and Rachel said, if you look at the opinion polls in Britain, immigration is seen as one of the top concerns that people have. So if, if, you're, if you're right that we should just say, you know, who are we as a people? People are saying, we don't want these people to come here. That's what they're telling the opinion polls. And well, it's always interesting to know what these people means, right? I mean, I don't know. I've certainly not been on the receiving end of any um, bad uh, comments from folks who said you shouldn't have come to this country, you know, so um, because they probably think I'm a, a, a productive person. And no. Because uh, you're American. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So I, I think you know, we, yeah, the terminology in this everyone. has yeah. always been very vexed. Well, you know, I know but, you've had comments about yeah. it. Yeah. So oh, you, I yeah. get it all the time. But uh, here, here is the thing. Uh, you know, what the Statue of Liberty says, right? You're the wretched. You, uh, you know, the wretched Hardcore of Europe metals, fled to America, went to Australia. And yeah. even now, white Europeans, or those with white ancestries in Europe, feel they have the right, the entitlement to go where they wish, you know, often for frivolous reasons even. And yet we are denying that basic human right to those who have no other option. I think it was 16 years ago that a group of Chinese people was found dead in the back of a lorry in Dover. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember this. Yes. Yeah. And I was so shocked by this that uh, with Corin Redgrave, the actor, we had a vigil for these people. And we just said things like son, lover, computer scientist, pianist, you know, to remind people. I wish we didn't talk in terms of numbers, that we talked in terms of people. Mm. These are people. And, you know, nobody leaves their homes if they don't have to. Actually, Germany is becoming the morally respectable, authoritative voice in all of this. Mm. Angela Merkel, what she said last week is what our leaders here should be saying. You don't follow public opinion. You actually try and challenge it and change it. Yeah. And what she did, I was so stunned that Germany is now becoming the moral nation while Britain 
is behaving in the way it is towards the people who babies are dying here, you know? And not just Britain. Chin yeah. Yeah. Also, for me, is you know why I saw the news: uh, seventy bodies died, yes. uh, and really shocked. They include the women, the baby, mm. and I think that this is yeah. Well. And then this is a, should be is a warning call to us because if you see the people from the all the refugees, they come from war zone, mm. from Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, and Syria, and actually from the the, the fact. Is the Western society involved in those war? Mm -hmm. And then when the Arabic Spring start, everybody I remember in the Western media is so exciting about this. But the end of the year, you see how many deaths. So I think maybe not just that we should treat them as human. Yeah, no question. Doesn't matter is the political view. And then another thing that's very important is we should think about our foreign policy. What, what do you make of the comments from the White House on Friday that this is destabilised, this is a product of not just a destabilised Arab world, but it risks destabilising Europe itself? I wasn't quite clear what the White House meant by that, but it's certainly they do, both in terms of the political uh, uh, backlash, because Angela Merkel did say various yeah. things this week and she was booed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the thing is, I mean, it depends, this whole thing about... Um, you know, we've seen the rise of a, of a far right in Europe uh, and also a far left, and it's a reaction to austerity. So it depends how you frame the question. If you say to people, actually, you know, we don't have any money and migrants are coming here and undercutting you and taking your jobs and making life miserable for you, then of course people are going to panic about them. But if you say to them, you know what, it's not migrants that cause this economic crisis, it's banks. It's not migrants that cause this hardship, it's an ideologically driven austerity policy, then I think the answers would be very different. So I completely agree with this idea that you don't, you don't follow public opinion, you, you lead it, you create and it, you, know, you inspire there are some it. really good people in this country who feel such shame about what's happening. They're taking goods to Calais in their own vans. A group of them near Gatwick, people who lived in that area, which is under stress, walked 95 miles in June, recreating the Pilgrim's Progress to show these people and their stories. I don't believe all British people are like this. Mm. I really mm. don't. And yes, no. you talk about numbers and, and how you prefer not to have numbers, but I think numbers can be illustrative. And when you think that, I think the UN put out yesterday that 300, uh, over 300,000 have crossed the Mediterranean to come to <coughs> Europe this year. But you think of the millions of refugees that Turkey and Jordan exactly. have taken and in. Lebanon. And Lebanon. And Lebanon, and Lebanon. sorry, yeah. yes. Um, and Jordan. Yeah. Um, which far dwarf anything that this very rich continent, very populous continent, is willing to do. So mm. those numbers, I think, really tell the tale. You don't really hear Lebanon going on about net migration and being swamped by migrants, do you? So. Okay. Hello. For some parts of England and Wales, the wetter part of the bank holiday weekend is 